So good morning, thank you for coming, uh, and thank you for inviting me. Um, the very first international conference I ever attended was here in the UK, and I have a, a strong memory of the closing ceremonies where the, the uh, moderator thanked everybody for presenting in English, especially the Americans. Um, so on behalf of the other Americans, we, we are trying. Um, so thanks for coming. Um, I'm here to talk about access path stability. So um, when we talk about stability, IBM in, in DB2 has given us several different tools for stability in the last few releases. Uh, so one of them that I'm not going to talk about that you may hear in other presentations is Apple Compat. Right? Apple Compat is uh, a parameter that's meant to provide you stability in the functionality of your applications so that when you run an SQL statement on version 10, 11, 12, and then once you get on 12, all the different function levels, they're giving you a way to say that you want that SQL statement to produce the same result that it produced on previous releases to smooth out your incompatibilities. Um, what we're going to talk about is stability with regard to access paths or performance. So we have similar set of features uh, in the last few releases that will help us stabilize performance. Um, now, as we talk about stability, stability is a, is a two-edged sword, right? When you prevent changes in performance, um, the idea is we're going to prevent bad things from happening, right? We're going to prevent the query that used to run in two seconds from running in 10 minutes, um, which occasionally does happen, right? Um, but when you prevent bad things from happening, you may also be preventing good things from happening. So when we talk about stability, just keep that in your mind. When, when we ask for stability, it's probably a good idea that you don't permanently ask for the same behavior. Um, because at some point, you may be preventing good things from happening. So we have a lot of features uh, in the last few releases of DB2 related to stability. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about the history, although history lessons aren't too much fun. And then we'll go through the... the um, Stability for static SQL. Um, if you were in Chris's presentation a moment ago, he talked a little bit about uh, the ability to stabilize uh, dynamic SQL as well. And so you can think about all the stuff we're talking about here in version 12 has been extended um, to dynamic SQL as well, which is uh, a, a little bit more, um, take a little bit more effort to, to get going uh, with that. Uh, we're going to talk about it with static SQL to start with here. So, a little bit of history. Uh, again, history lessons aren't too much fun, but it's, it's good to know where this thing came from. So back in version 9 uh, the, was the genesis of the stability features that we know today. And it showed up in a bind parameter called plan management, uh, which you still use uh, even, even if you don't know it. Um, so plan management, the idea is when we do a rebind, and plan management only works for rebind, <clears throat> when we rebind an application, we're going to keep old copies of the package that we could then switch back to. And it really is just that. We're, we're not just keeping the access paths. You're keeping everything about the package. In fact, the internals of the package are just set off to the side in SPT01, and they're there if you want to switch back to them. Um, one of the complaints about this back in version 9, I believe it was actually delivered post-GA in version 9, and there was no catalog support for it. So this package always told you what the current, you know, the package you were running right now looked like, but we had no way to tell what other copies of the package existed. Um, you just had to know about it. And I had actually had some of my customers would keep spreadsheets of, um, you know, what, when they had done these switches and, uh, you know, w uh, what time and all of that. Um, so we actually got catalog support for that in version 10 in the uh, form of this catalog table called syspack copy. Uh, they also extended the support for um, this stability to uh, SQL PL uh, programs, which was uh, you know, your native stored procedures for the most part. Uh, they also added two new bind parameters, AP compare and AP reuse. Um, now, the, the, the clients that I have really, really liked one of those two and pretty much pretended the other one didn't exist. Uh, so AP reuse is the way we can ask DB2, please don't allow an access path to change, right? or try not to. 
I, I'd use the word force, but it's that, that's not really a very good word. We're going to force the access paths to stay the same from one uh, rebind or bind to the next. <clears throat> we're not really forcing anything, but we're asking. Okay, we can, we'll talk about that in a moment. Um, that's the one everybody seemed to, to, um, to really enjoy using uh, because it, it provides maximum stability. Right? If you tell DB2, don't change the access path when I bind or rebind, you're very likely to get the same performance before and after. AP Compare is another one uh, that is less widely used, but I think should have uh, some use in the organization. And that is, allows you to say, uh, to tell me if the access path is going to change. Um, and we'll, we'll uh, look at that in a moment as well. Uh, they also gave us the explain package statement. So the explain package statement allows you to take the contents of a package and say, what are the access paths in there? So if you forgot to bind with explain yes, or you bound with explain yes three years ago, and we threw away the plan table in the uh, interim, you can go back and say, hey, DB2, give me the, the explain data out of that package. And we'll, we'll see examples of that in, in a little bit as well. Uh, you can also do this bind or rebind with explain only. I've heard kind of some mixed results of what that might do to you uh, if the package is currently running um, in, the, uh, in the application. But explain only says don't produce the package, just show me uh, the explain out of the statements in that package. Um, so first up, I'm going to talk about some of these features as they relate to bind versus rebind. <clears throat> um, I still find a lot of confusion about this, especially among application folks and production support folks. So I went right to the you know, chapter and verse here. Um, when you do a bind, you're taking in a new DBRM with SQL that may have changed right, from the application, and you're producing a new version of the package. And if you're using package versioning, that's exactly what happens. Right? You're creating new, uh, new stuff out of a potentially changed application. Um, when, you, when you do a rebind, you're not doing any of that. Right? You're just saying all of that SQL that's in the package right now, rethink it, right? reproduce the uh, runtime structures needed to run it, but you're not starting from, from actual you know, uh, SQL in a DBRM. You're starting with a package that already exists, a version of that package that already exists, and the SQL is not changed. Right, so typically we do rebinds, what? We have DBAs in the room, right? When do you do rebinds? Nobody knows? After what? Think? Yeah, you, you change something, right? So very often an alter will invalidate the package, right? So it's not, <laughs> this package can't be run in its current form. The SQL didn't change, the application didn't change. I just need to rebind to, to make it valid again. When else? Run statistics, right? So something about the environment changed in a significant way. We doubled the size of the table. <clears throat> we want DB2 to rethink the access paths based on new statistics. Uh, you add an index, right? That's a great time to uh, rebind because now DB2 could choose an access path uh, that uses that index, right? So the, the point is something in the environment changed, but the application has not, right? This, this SQL has not changed. If the SQL changed, so if you recompile your program, you don't do a rebind, you do a bind, right? And uh, I hear people get that mixed up a lot. So this is gonna be important for some of these stability features because some of them only work with rebind, some of them work with both. And uh, you know, we should, you just need to be uh, aware of that. So this is the picture that I sketched on a paper napkin many times uh, and decided to finally make a slide out of it, right? This is, if you're a COBOL person, this is the, your, your preparation process, right? The precompile takes in your source code and splits it into two pieces. The SQL goes down one path and ends up with a package. The um, COBOL goes down another path and ends up with a load module. <clears throat> DB2 precompiler sticks a token on each side of that equation called a consistency token. And at runtime, you better have both and they better match, otherwise you get everybody's favorite SQL code Minus 805. So um, now if you're using package versioning, um, which is something about half of my clients seem to love this and half of them don't know what it is or are scared of it. But package versioning is simply a change control feature that allows you when you do a bind, not a rebind, but a bind, 
<clears throat> to say rather than overlay that package as it currently exists, um, produce a new version of the package. And that version is usually generated, spun out by the precompiler using a timestamp. Right? So if we change the code and we you know, run through the program preparation process again and do a bind, then uh, you're going to produce a new version of the package. And now both of them are sitting there in the directory. And how does DB2 decide when you run the program which, which version to run? That, that consistency token, right? It's gonna find the consistency token that matches your um, load module that you're running. And this is great for change control, right? We can go ahead and do the, the, uh, the bind ahead of time and then when the new load module comes in, we'll just start running that one. Or if you have to fall back, now I know that doesn't ever happen in your organizations, but I'm told sometimes we put in new code and something goes wrong and they say, pull it back out, right? Um, and if that happens, then the old version is still sitting there and it just starts running that one again. So versioning is, is uh, you know, a really neat feature. It's been around since version two dot something of DB2. Um, the reason I'm talking about this is because we're about to talk about each package can have multiple copies. And I have to keep my terminology straight, right? A package can have multiple versions and each version can now have multiple copies. And that's not confusing at all. So let's talk about plan management. Right? And I, I interchange those words a lot, so if I do that, somebody stop me. Um, so when we do a rebind now, you have the option of specifying plan management. Plan management is a rebind parameter and it's only for rebind. So only for those cases where the application is not changed but we are rebinding, rethinking the access paths in a particular package. There's a zparm that specifies the default for this and unless you've changed it, it's set at extended now since about version 10. Okay, so the old way, this is going back pre-version nine, right? plan management off says every time I do a rebind, just overlay the copy that's there. Don't, don't keep extra copies. They gave us two um, stability features here. One is basic, and I don't know many people that use this one, but basic says when I do a rebind, please keep the old copy, we'll call that the previous, and then produce a new copy. And if we don't like the access paths or the performance of the way things are now, we can switch back to the previous. I think the problem that they spotted there pretty early on was if somebody does a rebind two or three or four or 10 times before they come talk to me, uh, then the current and the previous are probably gonna look the same. So they gave us uh, this extended, and this is now the default since about version 10. Uh, plan management extended says keep, you know, make a new copy, keep the previous copy, and also keep the original. And the original is usually going to be the one that was produced by the bind. So before you ever started rebinding it, that, that original copy, in, in, this, in a sense, it's really the oldest copy that DB2 could keep track of. Okay, so when you ever, whenever you started using plan management. <clears throat> if there's no original when you first do this, then you get a previous and the original will be the same. Okay, it just copies the, the old one to both the previous and the original. So we're now keeping up to three copies of every version of every package. So if we have any DB2 system people in the room, I don't know, we could pull them about their favorite DB2 catalog or directory table space. Any, any votes for anything other than SPT01? Or least favorite, I should say, right? <clears throat> so SPT01 has always been kind of the, the di most difficult catalog or directory table space to maintain. Um, and now, you know, we added versioning of packages a long time ago, so you're keeping multiple versions of every package. And now on top of that, we say you can keep three copies of every version. <clears throat> so when this was new, you know, the size of SPT01 had this capacity to kind of triple overnight if we did a lot of rebinds. So we want to use this feature with care. Um, now, the last few releases of DB2 have also given you all kinds of tools for managing SPT01. That's where the guts of the, the package actually live. And we also get catalog support for this. So syspack copy kind of looks like syspackage. Um, <clears throat> it's got a lot of the same columns that syspackage has. 
and you have this copy ID, and copy, copy ID of one means the previous, and copy two is the original, and then the current is, is always in this package. Okay. So we're keeping old things just in case. And at some point, the just in case probably, you know, at some point you're probably never going to need it and maybe you want to think about doing some cleanup. I don't know, nobody does that, but we'll talk about how you could if you want to, right? All right, so let's think about then if, you, if we do this rebind, and well, when would we do a rebind? Well, we'll do a rebind when the stats change, when you add an index. The, the time that these stability features are gonna come in most handy though, I think, is when you go to a new release of DB2. So let's say you migrate from DB2.11 to DB2.12. And IBM recommends that we rebind all of our packages. So first of all, how many of you actually do that? Um, it, a surprising number of the clients that I work with uh, do actually attempt to do that, maybe not on the same day as the migration, but over the first several weeks. And there's some good performance reasons you might want to do that. DB2.12 running a DB2.11 package, there's a little bit of overhead. Right? When they load a version 11 package into memory, they've got to think about it, and they've got to do some changes to make it look and think about it as a version 12 package. So there is a performance benefit to being bound on the same release that you're running on. Um, so we like to do a rebind of, of everything uh, when you go to a new release. Again, you know, if you're brave, right? Is that still the case with Apple Compat? So Apple Compat, again, is not dealing with the, the guts of the package. The Apple Compat is going to, is going to be how does this, how does it function, right? Does the SQL produce the same answer that it did on a previous release? So that, that adds another level of complexity to the whole stability conversation, but it, it shouldn't change uh, what's going on in, internally in the package, right? So, um, so as you do, a, if you do a rebind of, you know, a mass rebind of thousands of packages, um, it'd be really good if we could fall back to uh, a, the previous if, things don't go well, right? And that's what we're gonna think about doing. So when, when you now have these three copies, and if you don't like the one that you're running, you have a performance problem, you can do a switch previous, right? So rebind switch previous, and you're gonna give it the collection package and, and optionally version if you're using versioning. And all it's going to do is, is swap the current and the previous, and you're gonna be running the, the copy of the package that you were yesterday or whatever, whenever, before, whenever you did the latest rebind. And it just inverts the two, right? So if you run a switch previous twice, you're back to the, to the one you started with. If you say switch original, uh, some weird stuff starts to happen, right? They never want to touch the original. The original is always supposed to remain the original. So if you say, like, if we've done several rebinds before we decide that you know, we really need to get back to a previous copy. Well, now the previous and the current are the same. So they, they let us do this switch original. And if you do that, original becomes current, current becomes previous. What happens to previous? Previous gets lost, okay? So if you can get away with switch previous, that's probably better. You're not gonna be throwing away a copy of the package. But when you do a switch original, the original and the current are gonna be the same, and the previous is gonna be whatever original was a moment ago, and you've lost the old previous. So um, you wanna be a little bit careful with that one. Um, you know, you're playing a, a little bit of a, a shell game with, uh, with your copies of the package, right? So um, when, we, when a package goes invalid, here's another thing to think about. Um, only the copies of the package that are affected by whatever invalidated it will become invalid. So if you drop an index, let's say, um, and some of the copies of the package use that index and some do not, then only the, the affected copies will be invalidated. Um, if you drop a table or a table space, it's pretty likely that all the versions were going to depend on that in some way, or shape, or form. Um, but it only invalidates the copies that, that need to be invalidated. Um, now, this, was, this um, led to a sort of interesting problem that they tried to solve in version 12. Let's say your previous was invalid and your current is, is valid and you do a switch previous. What did you just do? 
you switch to an invalid copy of the package and what's probably going to happen? It's probably going to auto bind if you allow that and now you are probably right back where you started and you lost the previous copy because so there's a solution to that uh, in version 12, uh, which we'll talk about uh, in a little bit. All right. Um, switching to the original does eliminate the previous copy. And keep in mind, uh, and I've, I think I've kept my terminology straight here, we have versions and we have copies, and those are different things. All right, a package can have multiple versions, and each version can have up to the three copies. Right. Now, when you do a free, um, the default is all, plan management scope all, meaning you free the package, you lose all three copies. Um, prior to version 12, your only other alternative was you could free the inactive, so the previous and the original. Um, so at some point, those, you know, the, the value of those extra copies diminishes pretty quickly over time. You know, if you do a rebind today, um, it's very unlikely after about today, right, that you're going to want to switch back to one of those uh, old copies. So if you're, if you are, um, you know, conscious of trying to keep SPTL1 relatively clean, at some point you may want to go back and, and free the inactive copies of your package. You know, if they sit there for a year, certainly, it's very unlikely that you'll ever switch back to them. Uh, version 12 expands on this, and I've got a slide on that a little bit later. But version 12 allows you to actually specify only free the original or only free the previous. Um, but prior to version 12, all you could do was free all the inactive copies. Okay. Uh, version 10 um, added this neat little parameter. Um, when you do a, you know, uh, a rebind package plan management extended, you have the opportunity now to say AP retain dupe no. This is not the default. You only get it when you ask for it. But the idea is if you do the rebind and all of the access paths come out the same as what they used to be, do you really need to keep those extra copies? And if you say AP retain dupe no, that you're saying no, don't keep copies that have exactly the same access path as before. So we went to a new release of DB2. We did a rebind because IBM told us we should. Um, and for every package where all the access paths came out the same, I don't really, it, the, the value of those extra copies is, um, is probably uh, not real great for me. And again, if you're conscious of the size of SPT01, which all the system folks would, would be glad if we were, um, you, can, you can use this. Again, you don't get it by default. You have to ask for it. But if you're doing one of those mass rebinds, it, it's something to consider uh, to help manage the size of SPT01. Okay. Now, how does this even work? Right? How does it know whether the access path changed from one copy to another? If you think about the package, right, the inside of a package is really cryptic stuff. It's kind of like looking inside a load module. Right? Humans don't read it. Right? Well, most humans anyway. Um, now, the, the secret is that since about version 9, <clears throat> when you do a bind or rebind, they're actually taking the plan table that has the access path and sticking it in a sort of unreadable form inside the package. Uh, so they know what the access path is, right? IBM knows. And this is how AP Retain Dupe works. Right, as it's producing new access paths, it can take that plan table and compare it to the plan table that's in the previous copy and see if they're the same. And if they come out the same, then we can optionally then ask for it not to uh, update uh, or not to keep the old copy. Right, so this internal copy of the plan table is always now being stored inside the package. It's not really readable by humans, but it is there and it's readable by uh, DB2. Um, so this does allow bind and rebind to compare access paths across um, different copies of the package. <clears throat> and this opens up a world of possibilities. Uh, the first of which is that you can ask uh, DB2 to externalize that for you. If you say explain package, and this is an SQL statement, give it the collection ID, package name, version if you're using it, and even copy, um, then you can ask for that plan table to be externalized. So all it's going to do is take that internal, you know, copy of the plan table that they stored when they did the bind and stick it back in your plan table. 
So this is really nice if you didn't bind with explain yes, and you can do this even if you bound with explain no, right? They still keep it internally. So if you bound with explain no, and a year later you wanna know what the heck is that access path, because you're maybe getting a different one now, you can do this, explain package, and it will externalize it for you. Keep in mind though, it is only the plan table. How many explain tables are there now? I don't know. 117 was the number I heard. It's, it's a lot, right? Um, and it's not keeping all of those internally. It's just keeping the plan table. So uh, you don't get all of the explain information that you would have got if you had done it at bind time. But you do get the plan table. You can at least see what the access path uh, is or was. Okay. Uh, the opposite of that is kind of this explain only. So if I do an explain package, you're not seeing what would the access path be if I bound it right now. You're seeing what is it, what was it when I bound it whenever that package was bound. The opposite of that is bind with explain only. I don't want to see what the access path is in the package right now. I want to see what it would be if I bound it right now. So this doesn't produce a package. Um, it just takes the SQL statements in that DBRM or package and explains them. Right, and puts them in, in uh, your explain tables. Okay. Now, another thing that that internal format of, or that internal plan table that they store away is allowing them to do is to compare access paths uh, across versions or copies or binds. So this is the, the new bind parameter. I say new, it was in version 10, so it's not that new, but um, this is the one that I find not a lot of people interested in, but it seems interesting to me and not a lot of people are talking about it, um, but I, I do want you to at least know that it exists. You can do a bind or rebind, this is either one, with AP compare. The default is none, meaning don't do this, right? Um, but you can also specify warn or error. And what it's going to do is take that internal plan table and compare it to the access paths being produced and see if they're the same. <clears throat> so if you bind uh, or rebind a package that's full of SQL statements and everything comes out exactly the same, then AP compare doesn't do anything. It just, you, you've got a new package or a new copy of the package. If you specify warn or error, um, then AP compare is either going to warn you, hey, something changed, an access path changed, or if you don't like change, you could say AP compare error, don't, don't let this bind work, right? The bind actually fails if, if any access paths change. Now we need to define what is a change because this works for both bind or rebind, right? So a rebind, it's pretty straightforward. The statements haven't changed. All the statements are the same as they used to be. If there are any changes in access paths, we'll know. But what about on a bind? The SQL could have changed. So the only things it's going to compare are the statements that didn't change, right? If you make a change to an SQL statement, it's really a different SQL statement now. And the old access path is, you know, may not even be possible. Your statement numbers don't have to be the same. It's actually going to hash the text of the SQL and see and match it, you know, from one uh, version of the package to another. Right, so AP compare warn, warn me if anything changes, AP compare error, don't let anything change. If anything changes, fail the bind. So I ran this one um, with AP compare error, and uh, I think the interesting stuff is highlighted there. So in this case, we had two statements where the comparison is successful. That is IBM talk for the access paths didn't change, <laughs> okay? When the comparison is unsuccessful, that means the access path changed. So it looks like I had four statements in this package. Two of them stayed the same. Two of them uh, want to change, but because I said AP compare error, um, I failed the bind. So unsuccessful bind or rebind in this case. You like my program name there? Lots, lots of SQL. <laughs> lots of SQL. It has to be eight characters, right? So two statements I uh, wanted to change, two, two wanted to stay the same, and because I asked for nothing to change, the, the, bind, the bind fails, or the rebind fails. Um, this is interesting to me. I, I like this feature, and again, not a lot of other people, uh, I, I haven't made a lot of converts on this, but if you're doing a mass rebind, you know, you're going to rebind 1,000 packages because you went to a new release of DB2. Um, if you do this with AP compare error, what's going to happen? 
well, all the stuff that wasn't going to change anyway will get rebound. And the stuff that wants to change is going to fail, but now what do you know? You have a list, right? You have a list of things that want to change. And if it's a manageable list, then you might go through and try and figure out are these good changes or bad changes because good, some, some things you may, want, you may want to change, right? Stability is a double-edged sword. You're, you're going to stabilize. Stability is good. But you're preventing both bad and good things from happening. So this one kind of allows the good things to happen or the neutral things to happen, prevents the things that are going to change, uh, and allows you then to, to compare. Is that a full message or does it tell you which? Yeah, so wonderful question. What, which of my four statements, well, four is actually a low number for a package, right? So what if you have a, pa a package that has 50 SQL statements in it? And it says 49 of them stayed the same and one is different. Well, first of all, the whole thing's going to fail. Right? And then how do I know, number one, which one of those statements changed and you know, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing? You're going to actually want to look at the remarks column in the plan table. That's where it flags this stuff down for you. The remarks column in the plan table is kind of that catch-all. This is where it puts things that the bind would like me to know. Right? It does, you don't get any messages straight out of the bind that tell you which is which. I mean, you could also, if you have access path compare tools, you could throw that at the, you know, the two plan tables and try and figure out what was different. So you've got to, you've got to do it with explain yes, then, otherwise? You should, yes, yeah. If you're doing this kind of stuff, probably explain yes is, is a good idea, right? Um, we also have uh, AP compare warn. <clears throat> AP compare warn is going to give you similar messages here. It's just going to, the bind is going to be successful, right? So, um, you, uh, you, you want it to go ahead and do the bind or rebind, um, but you want to know if something changed. <clears throat> um, I'll talk about this a little bit more in a minute, but I think AP compare warn is maybe not a bad thing to have in your normal change control binds. Right? So if you're, you know, particularly if you're doing batch, you know, if I bind something during the day that's going to run tonight and the access path changes, now you know a few hours ahead of time. Right? And you can maybe do a little bit of research before the thing runs to figure out whether the change is a good thing or a bad thing. So AP compare warn, you know, it's again, it's not a default, but it might be something you think about putting in uh, just your production, your normal production change control binds. <clears throat> so if we want to do the comparison, you can run the explain package on the old, you know, do the rebind explain only on the new if you don't have it, compare and evaluate, pay attention to that remarks column. Okay. And this is the AP compare warn. So two statements where it was successful, two is not successful. Successful bind, though. Right? I didn't ask for it to stop, uh, to, to not work. I just want to know. All right, so now let's talk about the one that everybody does like <clears throat> and a lot of people are using, and that is uh, AP reuse. So you can do this again on bind or rebind. <clears throat> Excuse me. It's using that same internal plan table that is always produced now since version 9. And if you say the, 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 the way we say this uh, on the bind card is a little bit confusing to me. AP reuse none, obviously don't do this, right? AP reuse error was the original one you could use here. And AP reuse error says we want to <clears throat> try to get DB2 to use the old access paths from the last time that I did this. <clears throat> and if it can't, then fail the bind. That's AP reuse error. Now, when I say force the use or try and force the use of old access paths, <clears throat> excuse me, we're not really forcing anything. What it's doing is taking those old access paths out of the underlying package and passing them into the bind as a hint. So how many of you are familiar with hints? Anybody use access path hints? Okay. <clears throat> They're... Um, Hmm. I, I talk to Oracle people a lot who's, who, I mean, if you go to an Oracle shop, they're lousy with hints, right? They have hints on everything. And they're just comments in the SQL. So IBM didn't make it that easy, right? You have to come up with the plan table of the pa access path that you want, and you feed that into the bind as a hint. That's exactly what's going on here, except you don't have to do the work. Right? If you say AP reuse error, it's going to take those old access paths, make hints out of them, and pass it into the bind as a hint. And 
as you know, or as you might know with other hints, hints can be taken or they can be not taken, right? So when I say AP reuse error, if the hint can't be taken, then we're saying fail the bind. In other words, I, I only want this bind or rebind to work if the old access paths are available to be used unchanged. <clears throat> now, in version 11, they gave us another flavor of this. And I think this was trying to address the issue, you know, what if I have that package with 50 statements in it and 49 of them can take the hint and one of them cannot? If you say AP reuse error, you're failing the whole thing. So AP reuse warn says, take the hints that you can take and for anything that, that can't, just allow it to get a new access path. So <clears throat> in my example where you have 50 SQL statements in a package, 49 of them would have their old access path one of them is going to have a new access path because it couldn't use the old one. Now, why couldn't it, uh, why couldn't, why might it not be able to use the hint? <laughs> what, do you, what, hap what could happen to us so that the old access path just is not available to us anymore? You think of any cases? You, you dropped an index, right? Or, re or put it back with a different name, right? That could happen. <clears throat> Probably the most common thing to happen um, with this feature is you went from, from one release of DB2 to another, you're doing this mass rebind, which is when a lot of people are using this feature, saying don't let anything change. But there's this thing that happens before optimization now called query rewrite, right? Where it can actually rewrite your query as something else. And particularly in version 11, that got a lot more aggressive. So when developers write things like, select where substring of the last name comma one comma one is equal to S, right? Find me all the people whose names start with S. I've been a DBA for a long time. I've been trying to not, to get them to not write that, right? How should they write it? Last name like S percent, right? That's stage one indexable, all of that stuff. When you throw a function over the column, historically that made it stage two non-indexable. Well, in version 11, DB2 started doing some of those rewrites for them. <clears throat> well, what happened is the query that was bound in version 10 is not the same query that was bound in version 11 because IBM started changing them. And when that happens, AP reuse is not going to work. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because it's essentially a different query now. All right. So version 11 gave you AP reuse warn, which says... Um, force the use of the old access paths where that's possible, and then where it's not, go ahead and generate me a new one, but don't fail the bind, okay? And you'll, I think I have an out, I may not have an output of that one, but it, it's very similar to the AP, um, AP compare that we saw a little bit earlier. So for the bind, comparison will be with the same version that you're binding if that exists. If it's not, so in other words, if you're binding a new version of the package, it's going to compare to the most current or the, the most recent version available. And you get this DSNT 292i message issued. Um, it's possible that not all statements are going to match at this point, right? If you're doing a bind and asking for old access paths. So AP reuse only applies to the statements that are identical. And I mean identical, like the text of the SQL did not change. Okay. The statement numbers do not be, need to be the same. So that was a, for those of you who talked about uh, yes, I've done access path hints, right? That was a, a, a problem with hints is that the statement numbers had to line up. And if your statement moved around in the code, then it got a new statement number by default. Um, you don't have to worry about with this. It's actually checking the text of the, the statement. So yeah, here's the, the output, right? AP reuse error. In this case, four statements were successful. Uh, zero were not successful. That's good, right? What do I not know at this point though? This is, I'll, I'll give you a clue. This is the same package that I bound a minute ago with AP compare. It says, all right, you had four statements in there. They all use their old access path. What do I not know? That might be nice to know. Two of those statements would have gotten a different access path if I had let them. And AP reuse does not tell you that. In fact, AP reuse does not go through optimization at all for the statements that it's able to reuse. It doesn't even know that two of these statements want to do a different access path. So that's why I think when you're doing kind of a mass rebind, a combination of the use of AP compare 
and maybe AP reuse is a good idea. AP compare will tell you what wants to change, and then AP reuse will say, you know, don't let it change. Right. So I, you know, I favor kind of a, an approach that uses both. Uh, now, when I talk to production DBAs, a lot of them tell me they don't have time for that. Um, so if you do a, you know, a first pass with AP compare, um, then you might get, you know, 80% of your packages rebind without issue, and then you've got 20% of them they have to look at. And then some, one or two shops that I've worked with have then sent the 20% through AP reuse, right, to force the use of the old access paths. But they at least have a list now of, you know, things that want to change, and they can decide whether or not they want to accept that change. Right. Well, again, force is, is a use is a harsh word. We're not really forcing anything. It's sending the old access paths in as a hint. Sometimes the hint doesn't work. You might have indexes that are no longer available. And again, the big one is the query rewrite across different versions of DB2 could write the query in a different way. And when the query changes, whether the developer changed it or whether query rewrite changed it, um, it's not the same query anymore and it, it can't uh, necessarily use the same access path. Okay. Everybody good with all that so far? So version 12, enhancements to all of this. Um, number one, we can free only the previous or the original if we want. All right, prior to that, you could either free all copies or only the inactive copies. Now you can spe specify original or previous on that, um, um, on the free. Switch now will no longer allow you to switch to an invalid copy of the package. So I think this happened a few times to people and it was a problem. In other words, they, they decided they didn't like the performance. They issued a switch previous because someone like me told them they could, right? And this, the previous was actually marked as invalid, right? So the previous now becomes current. It would just let you do it. Well, then the invalid package tries to run. What's it gonna do? Rebind. And now you actually have a previous and a current that are the same, and they're both not what you want. Right? They're both bad. And even worse, if you switch to the original then, now you have all three, and you don't even remember what it was that you wanted, right? because you've overlaid all of them. So here's, the, here's how you solve this problem in version 12. Number one, it won't let you switch to the invalid copy, which I think is a good thing. That's, that's never what we want. But what it will do is allow you to use this AP reuse source. So in other words, I can say, bind the package or rebind the package, AP reuse error, AP reuse source previous. So even though that previous copy is invalid, the plan table is still in there, right? Now, is it going to work? Maybe, <laughs> right? So if you did something like drop an index and put it back, right, that would make the previous invalid if the previous used that index. But as long as you put it back exactly the way it was, the access path is still valid, the plan table is still valid, and it can still be used as a hint. All right, so this is the workaround for trying to switch to an invalid copy. You don't switch to it, you rebind AP reuse and specify the source as the previous or the original. Okay, so this AP reuse source is a, um, a new option on the, the bind or rebind that specify, allows you to specify which, what's the source of the hint. Does it come from the previous or the original? All right. Um, DSN statement table now actually tells you if AP reuse was effective and which package was used as the, sort, as the source. That's sort of important if you're using package versioning, right, because... Um, if you have 10 versions of the package out there and you do a bind AP reuse error, which one of those 10 packages was the source for the reuse? Well, I, I told you earlier, it's always the most recent copy of the pa or recent version of the package, but the DSN statement table will now tell you where it came from, right? Where, um, where the source of the reuse was, uh, uh, where it was sourced from. All right, so just a quick word on some best practices. When you go to a new release of DB2, a lot of the shops that I work with just rebind everything a AP reuse error. Uh, and I actually talked to uh, one of my clients, is a big credit union in the, in the US, and they went, I think this was their version 10 to version 11, and they didn't like change, they didn't want things to go bad, so they rebound everything with AP reuse error. And I asked them, so at what point do you 
accept you know, new access paths? Are you doing any analysis? And the DBA team said, no, that's not our job. <laughs> We're not going to do that analysis. And I said, well, what about when the applications start changing the code? Right? And then they're going to do binds. Are you forcing AP reuse? And they said, no. <laughs> so what their, their approach was, at migration time, I don't want anything to change. But as the applications start touching the code, they're going to be binding with AP reuse none. Right? They're going to actually get the new access paths. And then hopefully as part of their regression and performance testing, they'll figure out whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Okay, so that's the hands-off approach uh, for the DBA. You know, again, a more thorough approach, you know, rebind everything with AP compare error. Right? Let the stuff that's not going to change and didn't want to change, just let that go through. And then give me a list. I have a list of binds that failed now and a packages where the, the access path wants to change. And you know, some of those are going to be innocuous changes. Some of them, what you saw a lot on version 11 of DB2 was that it would use the same, app, same index as it used before, but match more columns. Right? I think that's always good. I think. I can't think of a time when that's bad. Um, and actually, if you do that um, AP compare, or I'm sorry, AP reuse warn, it would allow that and not treat it like a change. <laughs> Uh, same index, matching more columns, everything else is the same. Okay, so um, again, more thorough approach, rebind everything with AP compare error. Now you have a list, you can do some comparison, you can do some analysis. And, and again, when, you know, if you haven't bound since before version 11, you, you're probably going to see a lot of cases where you're just using the same index and matching more columns. That's the case where the developer wrote um, bad predicates, but they were the second or third or fourth column in the index. Right, that substring of name, comma one, comma one, or my favorite, date of a timestamp equals yesterday, or year of a date equals last year. Those are all things that IBM rewrites for us now and will very often allow you to match more columns in an index. Okay. And I talked about you know, possible use of AP reuse warn, um, particularly in your uh, regular change control. Okay. So plan management extended everywhere is, is a good thing. It does add to the overhead of SPT01, um, but uh, we think most system folks are, uh, have adjusted to that now. Again, if you really want to be kind to those folks, you can say AP retain dupe no, meaning if the package comes out the same as it was before, go ahead and use the new uh, package with the latest runtime structures and don't keep the old because the access paths weren't different anyway. Okay. And again, possible use of AP compare warn um, or maybe even error in your production binds. In other words, if you're rebinding something or binding something, excuse me, for production, it might be good to know if, if the access paths are changing, um, especially if you weren't expecting them to. Okay. Any questions on any of that or any discussion? How are you guys using these features? Is it something you use intentionally or you're using plan management extended whether you know it or not, probably. Yeah, it, it, it seems like a, it's almost always a good thing, right? The, the question was, why, why not AP retain dupe no as the default? It's not the default, and uh, it's not one of those like uh, you have a ZParm for the plan management that you, where you can override the default. As far as I know, they haven't given us that for AP retain dupe uh, yet. And I think the, the, the main use for that is if you're doing 1,000 rebinds, right? You, you've gone to a new release or you've got a lot of rebinds to do. Um, you can code that on the, on the bind card, but, uh, yeah, I, d I don't know the answer to that. We have to ask IBM, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Anything else? Yeah. Marcus. I used this extensively about two and a half years ago in another place where we had to rebind everything. Yeah. Prior to going to version 11 because, uh, uh, they were on version 10 and many of the packages hadn't been Right. Yeah. So before or after the migration or both? Before. Yeah. So, so the comment was, you know, this came in really handy when you're going to a new release and you have really old packages. So one of the things a new release will do is say, 
I'm not going to let you, you know, I'm going to invalidate anything that hasn't been bound since, I think, with version 12, it's like version 10, right? Minus two, Minus two is, well, it's not always been that, but that seems to be the, the thing lately, right? So in that case, it's a good idea to bind actually before, right, so that you don't invalidate things with the migration. And also so that you know whether any changes that happen are version 8 things or version 9 things or version 10 things because you're taking them all on at once, right, when you, when you haven't bound in several releases. So, yeah, I was in a shop not too long ago. I think they were on version 10, so it was a few years ago. And they hadn't run statistics on their main tables since 1997. <laughs> and they hadn't bound anything in a long time either. So they were getting the very best that, you know, version <laughs> 7 and 8 had to offer. <laughs> But as, as Marcus said, this is good stuff to use if you really, you're taking on a lot of change just by doing that many rebinds, right? Let's stabilize. And did you just use AP Reuse Error or did you use a combination? Uh, I used a combination. Error for the most part. Yeah. Just to get rid of everything that didn't change. Then everything that would have changed, you know, failed. And then you have to look at that. So you're using AP Compare Error first or AP re Reuse Error? AP Reuse? reuse. Yeah, okay. Interesting. Yes, ma'am. The other thing we've got as well now is we've got the history of when we last rebound without AP reuse. So obviously, you know, at some point, you want to open yourself up to potential new access paths. Right. So we now have it in the catalog. It, it, where, and where is that in the catalog? So, I <laughs> so the comment is they now document when was the last time you bound without reuse? Yeah, I think it's on SysPackage. But we've got it's in SysPackage. Okay, that's, that's interesting. So Okay, that's interesting. So, so in the past, we really couldn't track when was the last time we allowed access paths to change, and now, now there's a timestamp on that. Yeah. Okay, and it's in this package. Was that version 12 or version 11? Okay, in version 12. Very good. That should go on my version 12 slide. <laughs> yeah, thank you for that. Yeah, anything else? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, so when you do a switch previous, the comment is when, when, we do a, a, when we're using plan management and we don't like it and we use switch previous, the plan table does not get updated, right? And all it's really doing is taking those two packages in SPT01 and flipping the pointers, right? So you're now running the old copy. Now, presumably, you got a plan table for that version of the package or that copy of the package when it was bound, but it doesn't go copy those entries back to the plan table unless you then go do the, the um, explain package or go find them from when they were generated the first time. Yeah. But that could be confusing when you're going to investigate a further problem, right? You're looking at a plan table that the most current entries are not what you're running. Yeah. So you could, you could incorporate that into your um, process for doing a switch previous, right? Go, make, go do the explain uh, the explain package to get the most current plan table. When you do the explain package, though, do keep in mind you're not getting everything explain can give you. Right? All those extra plan tables, I mean, I, I talk to DBAs a lot about what a hassle those things are, but they really, that's really good information. I mean, you're getting predicate level information about, you know, it, it's, explain has always been good at telling you what happened. All right, I'm doing a table space scan, access type R, which, by the way, the letter R does not occur in the word table space scan. I think it goes, it's a relational scan, is that right? It goes back to the, the heady academic days when all this was new. Um, but it doesn't tell you, the plan table does not tell you why. Right? Why did I get a table space scan? It looks like I got two good indexes. Those extra explain tables do give you some clues into the why. Right? It'll break down your predicates and give you filter factors. So if you go to look in there, you might say, well, DB2 thinks I'm getting 80% of the data back. That's a good reason for a table space scan. Right? What's the best way to read 80% of the data? Not by using indexes, right? So it's a simple example, but it gives you the, the insight into the why. Well, that stuff is not stored in the underlying package. Right? That you only get from the original explain um, or from the full explain uh, at bind time. And only if you've got all those extra tables created. If I can make one more recommendation, all those extra explain tables, even if you don't think you need them, even if you don't currently use them, for your production binds, create them. <laughs> right? 
there's something like 22 or 23 of them. Um, as I just said, that information may come in handy someday and may give you an, an idea of why a, an access path A was chosen over access path B and why it changed when you, you know, reran the statistics or something. It's good to go ahead and capture that. The bind does, the explain doesn't make you have all those tables. A plan table is enough. Uh, but I would go ahead and create them uh, in your production environment because you're getting extra information that you might someday uh, want. And it, again, it's not easy to get it after the fact. Okay. All right. I'm done talking. Uh, the session is IB. That's the letter I. Um, please fill out the evaluation. Um, I forgot to put the QR code on this. How about I go back to the beginning? The QR code is on the door outside. The QR code is on the door and it's right there. So uh, you can either scan that with your phone or the, uh, the app has a place to leave feedback. Please leave the feedback. Uh, the conference would greatly appreciate that. And thanks for being here. I'll be around if you guys want to talk for a little bit. I think we're going to lunch now. So uh, yeah, thanks for being here. Appreciate it. <laughs>